And, and one thing that didn't establish in the, in, in the documentary is why you left the group. Because that was the MTV thing. Sid leaves the group. But I, I, I don't know if, if you ever, like, said why did you leave the group at that time. Uh, I think I was just a scatterbrain. You know what I mean? Like, my, my, I couldn't really focus on it on one thing. And I felt like uh, I was more of a, like, more of a something that was against the group than something that could help the group. For lack of a better term, you was like the ODB. I guess, yeah, kind of, you know what I mean? Like, I just, it, it was, uh, I couldn't get my shit together. I couldn't concentrate mm. it. For the first time in my life, I couldn't figure the shit out where I, what I wanted to do, mm. you know? And, that, and the road life is rigorous. Like, that shit is crazy. Yeah, especially yeah. when you're, it's your first time out there, and I'm not going to make any excuses or whatever, but, no. yeah, I went through culture shock and all that shit that, you know, and I would see these guys just raging on fucking tour. Right. And I'm like, man, I, I just don't feel that shit. Right. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't, no, yeah. uh, wow. I wasn't having fun. It was the, I don't want to say a burden, you know what I mean? But it was like a heavy shit on me um, to, uh, to just stay the whole time out there with them. You know what I mean? Wow. And I had to battle the, the, I guess, demons that were trying to tell me, like, fuck these dudes and split, and, you know? And, and that, the right yeah. thing, which was telling me, stay right here with your crew. Right. You know what I mean? And, that, and, that, and I, I didn't always come through with that shit. Right. You know what I mean? So I fuck, I've always uh, felt shitty about that, right. you know, until I figured that shit out and became a constant part of the, of the touring crew. Right. You know I mean? And you started your own crew as well, right? Your own punk rock band, I yeah. believe it was? Yeah, back in those days, yes. I started a band that uh, that actually helped me stay in music. Okay. You know what I mean? Because my idea, m fucked up as it was, I was like, just, I'm just going to quit. Right. You know what I mean? But these guys, um, like, we, we just need someone to practice with. Can you right. just rap? And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, whatever. And that turned into me staying... Productive, doing music and this and that. The whole time, Be Real would not, you know, he'd come over to my house like once or twice a year and be like, hey, nigga, you ready yet? Or, right. And I'd be like, no, I'm not ready yet. You know what I mean? Right. So when I became, when I decided, okay, I'm going to go back to the, to the crew because thanks to these three cats right here, right. they kept the band, you know, like alive. Like three cats? Yeah. 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 And, and they, they kept the band going while I took my hiatus. Right. You know what I mean? Until I figured it out and, and, uh, and, and I developed this, you know, who gives a fuck attitude. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and that's, you know, the same shit that I'm on till today, you know? Because that's what I was, I was, I was expecting almost. Um, or, um, you know, Ice Cube left NWA. So I, and, and then it was disc records after that and, you know, back and forth. So I was expecting that, you know, when, when you left the group and then like like you said like um, MTV reporting on it how come you, you guys never took that route no but, but but then you see the footage of what you said on stage yeah. had you ever did you ever see that till the documentary what he was saying on stage he no was, no he was basically saying that like he was bigging him up he was saying yeah. look he's not here anymore but he's right. still a part of the group like it was more right. supportive words yeah yeah because he's important. our brother you right. know what I mean that's the way we look at each other you know we're, we're yeah. not just bandmates Right. We're, we're more than that and that I think that's why it's been able to be what it is because we understand each other you know if one of us is having a bad time we just back up and let it breathe and you know the rest of us continue to toe the line and, and make it happen and you know he he got me into this shit this right. guy and this guy right, right here and and you know to give him his flowers mellow you know they got me off the street when I was banging they were already kind of in the game they could have pushed on without me and figured it out but you know they brought me in and you know there's there's only a couple different right. paths when you're right. banging especially in that time when it was crazy heated and these guys took a chance on me right, right. so you know when send dog left it, we weren't mad at him we we right. just tried to understand we were disappointed but like we carried the line till till he came back and we all you know mugs would from time to time check in on him. I would, Bobo yeah. would. Right. And in his time, he came back and we accepted it, embraced it, and knew, fuck, you know, we were back. Yeah, we let him have blow. his time. We right. let him have his time. You know? I just gotta say that there was no, like, fucked up treatment from these cats right. while I went through my own shit. 
Because most I mean, groups, like, it, it happens like that. Like you, you yeah, go like the minute day, you show weakness they, in the armor or something yeah. like that, they kick your ass out. Oh, uh, it yeah. wasn't that with these guys. You know what I mean? They were just. And it's, money you know, could get in the in the way of it too. It, it's like, all oh, okay. He, well, he, he saved my life, so I could never disrespect this guy. You know, right. same as Muggs, same right. as Mello. I, you know, I might have had my problems with Mello in the past, but you know, I always got love for him because that basically saved my life. So we got to be understanding to one another. You know what I mean? Especially when we built it up, like. At but, that point. But was it difficult, you know, going on tours without him? And, um, you know, especially singing his part. I believe you was, like, singing his part. Yeah, we did around. a few tours where I was doing all his parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. They, yeah. they split them between yeah, Bobo and yeah. 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 And then the ones that they couldn't do, I would do Send Dogs Versus, right. and we just, you know, sort of split it up. It was, you know, we still brought a show. It's right. just that, you know, we had the missing fucking component in right. Send Dog's energy, you know what I mean? And right. his voice, his tone. When you don't have that, it ain't necessarily Cypress Hill, but we gave it to crowds nonetheless, and they accepted it. Right. And when he came back, it was just like even that much more. Better, so, right. Yeah, and, and uh, so in his time, man, and I knew he'd come back. Right. It, was, it was just he needed time to breathe and reset because we were on a crazy pace. Like, right. we didn't see home, but for maybe two, three weeks at a time, and then we were back on the fucking road. We didn't see our families, friends, and, right. and nothing, you yeah, know? Yeah, it was like and seven, nothing. eight months a year. Yeah, we were on the road but yeah. for like the first five years. No right. FaceTime. Yeah, no yeah. Yeah. technology. Yeah. No yeah. fucking like, social nothing. But there yeah. was no yeah. social shit, so you had to get out there and get face-to-face with your fans. Which get out is there the, and do yes, shows right. and do in-stores, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Visit oh, radio, uh, visit radio stations funny. and morning shows when and I night shows. I used to try to bring my people from the hood, and I used to bring them out, like, yo, you come with me. I can kid you not. If it was like 15 of them, seven of them would go home. Hey. Within the first couple of weeks. <laughs> you read my fucking mind. <laughs> you read my fucking mind, because I was about to just say that, right, is that you can you can... There's some motherfuckers that are built for this right. and some that have to sort of learn and mm -hmm. gradually get into this and some are not built for it at no, all. Because we did the same thing. Right. We, we brought a couple of my homies that I banged right. with right. Right. and one of them snapped in for sure. He could live the road life but the mm -hmm. thing is is he got reckless. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The hood started flashing up in different places mm -hmm. when he would drink too much. In different hoods. Mm -hmm. and right. Different oh, yeah. cities. And, and, <laughs> different you know, <laughs> and that's a liability because right. things could pop off, right? right? And then there's the other homie that we brought on who was a G, you know, mm -hmm. one of my Gs. And he spent a tour, he spent a, a, a full tour with us, but he didn't want to do another one. Another because, one, he never wanted to come he, back. Because all he ever knew was the hood. Look, and and he missed so much money in the hood. Yeah, and he, or, or he just missed being around yeah, he missed, that he missed, shit, yeah. and he couldn't disconnect from it. Being on the road was cool, all right. but I'd rather be in a comfort zone right. here because I know this shit. And, right. and some get stuck in that mentality, you know what I mean? Not, and Sen wasn't that. Mm -hmm. It was just that it's... We were fucking going so heavy, it just gassed him. Right. You know what I mean? For me, I was like, this is all I got. Right. I'm fucking, we're rolling. Right. And, uh, you know, so it never got, I never got tired of it. I, you know, sometimes now I might, but um, at that point, I was like, fuck, we're on, we got to keep going. And Muggs was the same way, and, and Bobo. And, and I believe that Sen was in this way, but it just eventually, it get. When you're seeing only two weeks at home and then having to do right. another eight week tour, man, that shit right. bears down on you eventually. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Especially when like you, you said, there was no FaceTime back then. No. There was no like you especially probably felt going, like you were disconnected from the world. Yeah. Going 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 overseas where I was it's about to say that. really a culture shock because yeah. it's a whole Before different thing. Before the worldwide cell phones too, you know right? Exactly. I mean? <laughs> and, and you know, different languages, different well, food, there was different things, back then. you know what I mean? Yeah, but imagine that. Imagine international beeping. Oh yeah, that's annoying. Oh man, hey, what was what was key though for a second is when those next tells came that you could do the walkie talkie shit. Yeah, shit. Those were the first joints. Have you ever slowed down on touring, or it's been like this from the beginning? There was a couple times. A couple. I think that COVID. Yeah. Well, yeah, COVID definitely. That that's been. You know, one of the the longest stretches that we didn't touch the road, but there was there was stretch. I was playing paintball, you know, competitive. Yeah, you got a paintball, paintball team and all yeah. that, right? Yeah, and I used to play as well. And I was totally fucking addicted to that shit. And you so, don't do it anymore. You no, don't have the no, team. No, no, no. That I mean, I could put it back together, but I just, you know, I got what happened was you this. You be addicted right? to paintball. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, that's just, yo, I, was, I almost went pro too. Like, I almost yeah. went pro. Yeah. We, Wait a we minute, were on that. pro paintball? Yes. What? Yeah, million, million dollar cups? What okay, are you talking so about? Let me, let me explain to you, oh Norman, right? Let me explain to you. There's uh-huh. two styles of paint, two different styles of paintball culture. There's the ones where regular folks go in, they play what's called scenario games, right. and they go into a field and they try to shoot each other <laughs> out. That's one. Right. That's not the one that we speed were doing. Ball, we were doing yeah. the one called speedball. Where yeah. let's just say this is the field. It's cut in half. It's you a could, team, and it's like yeah. play like a sport. Like you got your you got obstacles over here, obstacles over there. It's a mirror. Seven guys, seven guys. You're trying to get no, it's, their it's flag. It's addictive, man. Like you get into it. And you're shooting guns, you know, paintball guns at each other, trying to like communicate and strategize like chess with guns. You know yep. how to get these dudes 